Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation this morning is once again about uh, jobs, appointments and the likes. The uh, DPR, of course, put out a statement yesterday uh, dispelling rumors about uh, a, a, well appointment of one of President Muhammad Buhari's aides, Bashar Ahmad. There was a story alleging that he had been appointed to head a particular department of the, uh, the DPR, Department of Petroleum Resources, uh, to earn a little above 400,000 naira monthly. It went as far as putting uh, an official appointment letter online uh, um, as a verification for the story. But uh, the controversy started after that, claiming that that letter was fake. And the DPR also put out statements saying that there was no such appointment and it is all fake. We've invited this morning Kunle Rashid, the publisher and editor-in-chief, CT Rover Magazine. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning. All right, so yes. let's, let's get straight into this. The DPR spoke about this. Paul Osuit's spokesman said, it's fake news. It's the handiwork of mischief makers. What are your thoughts on that? Um, fake news has become this monster that is threatening the media industry, not only the media industry, but the world um, at large. Um, a lot of people are mixing this up. So we all know that um, fake news um, is about spreading false information or misleading information out there and putting it to be legitimate or genuine. But whichever way we see it, it is a um, double-edged sword. Um, we have what is known as misinformation and disinformation. Um, people who make genuine mistakes while trying to dish out things, um, news is all about defamation of, um, I mean, um, defamation of, um, of um, information. People who make genuine mistakes while trying to, like, pass out information. That will be cut as misinformation and the other which is disinformation is deliberately um attempt or act of dishing out um fake or false information to make it appear as um real news it is something that um it's really affecting the regular i mean the media generally from the regular and the unregular media. There's no how we're going to do it that we won't include the other media because since you can um, afford to have a phone, uh, any mobile device, a, um, a desktop, you can become um, a news um, platform. You know, so those, um, that is the main thing about the two that we have to differentiate. Okay, so, so um, we currently, of course, I believe have enough laws tackling uh, fake news in Nigeria. Uh, do you think that those laws need to come into play here? Oh, definitely. World over, world over, uh, um, they are trying to cop the SSA of how Unfortunately, let me just quickly say this. Unfortunately, fake news can never go away. We can just reduce it. Because even in the so-called um, civilized um, country, it has become one um, thing that's also affecting them, uh, whether right or wrong. We know what happened with the Trump administration, where it had almost all the media um, houses are fake news for real. But in Singapore, that is what I know, that they've made a law, and anybody who goes against that law by pushing out fake news will have to go for 10 years. So also in Russia, in France, Germany, and in Malaysia. I think um, the government has a role to play in here. Um, the government and the social media owners, they have a role to play. 
if the social media owners can um, cut the expenses uh, by blocking or removing um, those who go against, uh, those who go against the law, I think that will help in um, reducing the menace. The government also, with the laws, um, the proper laws in place, that can also be good in coping it. But I, I would like to say this. The government are also, I mean, the government of Nigeria is also guilty of the offense. You know, I talked about this information when we started this. I can remember vividly this government when they were about um, um, contesting for this election, I think in 2015, there were a lot of propaganda that was pushed out out there in uh, maligning and injuring the other party's um, reputation. And if you're in in um, in equity, if you must come to equity. Apart from the conscience, you must come with clean hands. So the government too should learn that winning elections should never be a do or die affair. Because one thing I um, understand about this country, when election comes, is for one person to be pushing. Mr. Mr. Rashid, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I, I want us to stay on this issue, on the DPR denying the appointment letter. So when the People's Gazette put this out, the People's Gazette, by the way, is not, is not just a blog. It's a renowned website by a renowned journalist, a former journalist working with Premium Times. He founded this in 2020. And it put out this letter saying Bashir Ahmed has been appointed as a project manager with the DPR. And one thing lots of people have pointed out on social media is that the DPR did not deny that Bashir Ahmed has been appointed. They're just denying that the letter is fake. So I really don't know where we should face now because people are saying if the DPR believes that, that you know, the appointment was concocted by the People's Gazette, then they should be suing Sam Olugundipe and the People's Gazette, not just coming out to say the letter was false or falsified. What do you think about this? Um, in journalism, you are as good as your source or sources. Um, the ethics of journalism actually states that you should reveal um, what your source or who your source or sources. The issue about that, it is not the first time such will be happening. Um, you can push out a news that is genuine, and uh, people that are affected by the news will tag that as fake news. I mentioned the issue of um, Trump. Some of the things that were said about him actually happened, but he decided to tag that as fake news. I know Premium Times, I know who owns it, and it's one of the things you can rely on when you're about um, to call that um, menace known as fake news, you must try to check who the author is and the platform. Now back to the question. Um, the person who wrote that and brought out that information may have done the right thing. But um, the person with the DPR, like you said, then, um, denied that the letter did not emanate from them. It, it is not the first time such will be happening. I can remember now um, a colleague of mine who was with Punch newspaper, a female, was arrested by someone known in the community, I mean, the society too, for writing about his new, uh, I mean, um, a romance between the non-society person and uh, a certain lady who is one interior decorator and hotelier. And at the end of the day, today they are celebrating that union despite locking up that female journalist uh, in the police cell 
What do you have to say about that? How do we right. determine what is fake and what is not? Important but question. Uh, Kulera, from, yes. Yeah, Important I, I, question we, we, we need to wrap up, you know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, if you can, in 30 seconds, go back to a question that I had asked you earlier. Um, and I'm trying to find out from your take why this is so controversial and what exactly is wrong with an appointment of Bashar Ahmad if the story was true. The, the, um, the spokesperson, is that what you're saying? The media that was reported yesterday that um, he was appointed by the government. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Kulera, do you choose to not hear that question or you, you just don't want to answer it? All right, I think, I think right. let's draw the curtains here. Thank you very much, Kunle Rashid, uh, for your time and thoughts on the breakfast. All right. All right. It's, it's quite dicey, <laughs> quite controversial, really. And I can't blame him. You know, you might not have all the information. It's a, it's a pretty simple question. Um, and, you know, I think it should simply be answered as, okay, well, you know, people wouldn't be excited because um, we are still seeking that people with, you know, qualifications should take certain positions. And also, because of the controversy in the last couple of years of nepotism, the accusations and allegations of nepotism in the current administration, because also that um, there's, you know, Bashar Ahmad has never, you know, really been a petroleum worker. There's, there's numerous ways to answer. So it's, really, it's not really not a difficult question. I can't really question. say why he wouldn't answer, but re remember he's also a journalist, so maybe he's also trying to protect his own... It's a, once again, so. it's a pretty simple question. So, yes. Let's, uh, let's head into something, something else. We'll be talking about refineries and their repairs with an energy expert after this break. <laughs>